there, I'm Jalayla Starr, and today I'm going to continue the uh, series on Nibiru, and this will be the final segment. And what I want to talk about today is the Nibiruans agenda since their contact with me back in 1993. At that time they began work on what we call Project Earthshift, and of course the first uh, phase in their work on Project Earthship would be to prepare someone to be their spokesperson. And so we began three and a half years of intense emotional clearing. Isn't that something? They didn't start by telling me who they were. They came across as just uh, spiritual guides. They spent three and a half years cleaning out emotional debris before I could even begin the work that I came here to do. And you know, that's the interesting thing about the Nibiruans. Uh, I think if their agenda was anything other than trying to help us, they would have started in trying to teach me all the mental, what I call the, the multidimensional candy, all about our history, all about Nibiru, what they were like, all the things that I absolutely love. And they wouldn't have even been concerned about uh, preparing me to become the kind of person who could fulfill uh, the duties and, and assignments that had to be done. Well, the Nibiruans, their project Earthshift was about uh, the final phase of their efforts as a parent race to help us achieve our divine mission, which was, which is to become a seed race that can achieve compassion and populate the galaxy and bring peace uh, to the galaxy and the galaxies beyond ours. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And there's a lot of drama going on. Because you're at the end of a universal game, or the potential end of a universal game. And so the extremes of light and dark have become more extreme. And as a result, you see conflict everywhere, which is, is normal. And the idea is now we must find our way back to the middle ground. And so as above, so below. If we're experiencing all this conflict on Earth, then you can imagine what's going on out, out there. Okay, so the things that they began to teach me in emotional clearing were about past life regression, they said. And then, and I'm, I'm not going to go into too much on all these because there's so much to cover. They taught me past life regression. They sent me to someone to teach me about behavior patterns and how to trace a behavior pattern back to the core belief that's creating it. They taught me about the temperaments, the different types of temperaments. Um, they taught me about how uh, inner child work, about working with guides. And then they went beyond that and taught me how to travel timelines or what uh, is now called remote viewing because they said when you do emotional clearing you can clear for the planet that you're on now and the lives on that planet but remember the soul's been many many places so you have to be able to clear all the way back to other planets and other events on other timelines so I learned to travel timelines. So all that began was done in the three and a half years just preparing me to even begin the work that I came to do. So in 1995, uh, at the very end of 1995, they revealed to me my true identity and then we began a lot of the galactic work. Uh, in that uh, they taught me um, uh, DNA recoding, accelerated DNA recoding to recompile DNA, uh, the, ten, the, the other ten strands so that I could communicate with beings beyond Earth even more effectively and re re you know, bring my psychic abilities to a higher level. Um, and then after I did that, um, they began giving me the formula of compassion, which they were giving to me in pieces through the DNA recording process, but I wasn't able to really, you know, you, you see things in hindsight. So I was able to write down the formula after I had completed it, and then I posted that on our website so that everybody could have it. They said, make certain that one goes on the website for, every, for the world to have. And then uh, I began doing the grid work, which was, and the templates, which was, part of us uh, 
Project Earthship was to achieve an ascension staircase. And these stair steps would be levels of consciousness that a human could step up to uh, so they're, so they're moving, they're stepping out of 3D and into higher levels of consciousness, and that would be the, you know, because not everybody's going to the same level. They're going to go to different levels, but at least the, stair, the steps are there. But then beyond that, they said, now the prophecies of the past are based on events that occurred not necessarily just on this planet, but on previous worlds that had been destroyed, and whose timelines had been woven into that of Earth so that the souls on those destroyed worlds could incarnate onto Earth and continue their evolution. But the challenge is that the events that brought about the destruction of their worlds still have to be resolved to a compassionate, integrated conclusion. So those events are tied in to geographical locations on our planet. And so we need to do template work in order to provide an opportunity to make a different choice when that event occurs in the future. So I began traveling to do template work. But I couldn't have done the template work without having done the DNA recoding, being able to access timeline events and uh, achieve compassion in the moment. So all my prior training allowed me to do the work that I came to do. My point in all this is that the Nibberwood ruins, I don't believe, would have taken that much time and effort, which has been over 15 years, to train somebody to put out just pages and pages of information, channel writings, books, uh, have me do a library of galactic information to be made available to people if they were coming back to enslave us. You would think they would do the opposite. Plus, I've, all, I've often learned, I mean, I've learned that many times the powers that be are going to, they're going to try to sway you against one person over, you know, and, and toward another based on their agenda. Well, we've learned, thanks to people like David Icke and, you know, numerous other researchers, that the powers that be are out to enslave humanity, not set them free. And... Consequently, they are trying to get us to uh, uh, ref um, not embrace our parent race, the Nibiruans, which they are inbound right now. They should be back around about 2012. So when you put all that together, it looks like just what the, the Nibiruans had said, that there would be a, a massive disinformation campaign meant to get humanity to respond in a negative manner toward their own parent race and in a positive manner toward ETs that they would want us to embrace but are actually helping the powers that be to enslave us. So it's an interesting game here toward the end of 2012 and you and I all have to make our decisions. The Nibiruans just wanted to make certain that you were able to make an informed decision. So this concludes our series and I will uh, talk to you next week. And please don't take anything that I say is absolute truth. Go and do your research to prove why you know what you know. I did it for 25 years, and I'm glad I did. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.